Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Charlie and I'm a senior product designer working in tech. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my three tips to help improve your US case studies so you can add them to your portfolios and help you get interviews. Now I've been mentoring for over four years now and I do a lot to help junior and intermediate designers with their case studies. And after reviewing a lot of them, I think my very first tip would have to be to focus on only one thing during your case study. And I'm saying that because one of the biggest mistakes that I see when reviewing case studies from junior and intermediate designers is that they have this tendency to kind of read like a checklist. We needed this feature, so I made it. We needed a search filter, so I made it. We needed a dashboard, so I made it. And I think you guys can tell that even from the way that I'm talking about it, it really doesn't feel like there's a lot of storytelling involved. And by writing out your case study like that, it also doesn't do anything to tell me or your interviewer or someone who is like a recruiter trying to go through a portfolio and see if you are even like worth doing a phone screening on what it is about your design process that makes you a good designer. And by having this checklist method, it doesn't show that you have any creativity or you're interested in doing any exploration for your design project. It doesn't show any passion or curiosity. And it's really unfortunate because all of these are like traits that people are really looking for, especially in these entry level roles. So I think at the root of it, it really just doesn't show that you are taking the time to get a deeper understanding of the problem that you're trying to solve. So my tip for focusing on only one thing in your case study is to really help you feel like you have the time to show off your whole design process and understanding of the problem at a deeper level. Because in a UX design case study, you want depth, not breadth. Breadth is very shallow. You're kind of just like getting your hand into the problem and really going very surface level. You want that depth in your case studies to really show that you have a deeper understanding of the problem and why the recommendations and design decisions you're making are really going to solve it and have a greater impact. When I write out my case studies, I like to make sure that I'm just trying to solve one problem. And something that I like to add to my case studies is early concept explorations. So I can do this on my iPad or I can do this just on paper. And I actually like to show this in my case study of me doing these like sketches on what my solution could be. And it really acts as like a creative warm up for myself, but also shows that I'm not just jumping straight to a conclusion like right off the bat and making assumptions about what I need. I'm really genuinely trying to be curious about the problem and seeing if I can think outside the box in order to solve it. Also in my case studies, I like to do at least three iterations of wireframes before I get to the final solution so that I can really show that I'm trying to apply this deeper level of thinking and this full understanding of that problem. Now, if you were to do all of that work for a bunch of different features, like five or six features in your case study, that's going to be a lot of work and that's going to be completely exhausting. I don't even know if you're going to finish it. You might just end up giving up on your case study before you get to the end and that will really end up of dropping the quality of your case study. So when you write one, just try and focus on one thing and one problem that you're trying to solve and diving deeper into it. Now, I'm really excited to say that this video is sponsored by Design Lab. Design Lab is an online learning platform where aspiring and experienced designers can go to grow or start their careers in UX design or product design. Their flagship accelerator program, UX Academy, was the first fully online bootcamp for people who were interested in going into UX design or product design. It allows people to go from no to little design experience to job ready in as little as six to nine months. The best part of UX Academy is that it's not just a series of tutorials, but a fully immersive program with dozens of hands-on projects. You are also matched one-on-one -on -one with an expert mentor working in the field to give you personalized feedback on your work and to to help you build a one-of-a-kind portfolio. After graduation, Design Lab also connects you with a career coach to help you prepare materials, prep for interviews, and make your applications stand out. Most UX Academy students start by taking Design Lab's introductory program, UX Academy Foundations. This four to six week program teaches you foundational UI skills and familiarizes you with popular tools like Figma. Like with UX Academy, you'll also get one-on-one -on -one support from an expert mentor. 
To check out UX Academy, click on the link in the description and use the code Charlie at checkout. You'll get $100 off UX Academy and help support the channel. And by the way, if you're already working as a UX, UI, or product designer, Design Lab has a range of advanced courses that cover topics such as AI, advanced uses of Figma, and data-driven design. That same link and code will save you $100 as well. And I also want to highlight a couple of really noteworthy things that Design Lab has to offer. So first is their unique portfolios. Design Lab's capstone projects in UX Academy are open-ended to allow students to build a portfolio that aligns with their interests and stand out from other applicants. The other thing is the low initial commitment. Design Lab's UX Academy Foundations program allows students to decide whether UX design and their learning format is for them, with a low initial investment of around $500. When students go on from Foundations to UX Academy, they get a $500 tuition credit, essentially making Foundations free. For my second tip on improving your UX design case studies, my tip is to make sure that your case study is fun to scroll. So I think with especially how competitive the field is now for designers, I wouldn't say just like only in junior and intermediate levels, but there's a lot of competition for our senior roles and especially like remote roles as well. Now we all know by now that hiring managers are not going to breathe through your entire case study to completion, but really what they're doing is scrolling through to make sure that you hit specific components and that it is worth actually talking to you in an initial phone screening. So we all know that you should be breaking up your text into different paragraphs so that it's easier to read. But also when you think about how to scroll, one rule that I really like to set for myself is to make sure that there is always an image on the page. So if I'm not looking at the image on my desktop and I'm scrolling and then I keep scrolling, I see an image. Once I move a little bit down, I always see like the little bottom bit of an image. So I always know it's coming up. That keeps me in check that I'm making this very visually appealing and that I'm not kind of bombarding people with just a bunch of text. I always know that I'm getting kind of lazy when writing my case study and in my portfolio when I just start dumping out text because I'm too like lazy to make an image or just take that little extra step. But really you have to be doing this kind of thing, which is also why I like to encourage you to spend a few days on your case study. Like you're not going to be able to create a good one in one day. Like make sure you give your yourself enough time so that you can put that same amount of effort not only in the beginning of your case study but all the way to the end. Now another thing that I really like to do to make sure that the scrolling is kind of fun is to include things like quotes from users during your user research or like when you're getting feedback in bigger text so it's really like kind of show stopping for the person who's scrolling. I also like to add metrics in tables or even put my KPIs in tables just to change things up. And one of my favorite things is to include screenshots, especially of really nice emails from happy users saying how much they like the changes and how happy they feel knowing that their feedback was heard. Screenshots are honestly some of my favorite things to add to my case study and also give this kind of like real genuine look about it. So all of that can really help make your case study more interesting and also memorable when people scroll through it. And for my third tip, I like to design with the presentation in mind first. So this is something that I ended up figuring out as a senior. And honestly, I could have saved myself so much more time if I had just learned it earlier and like understood and had it click for me. So I really wanted to share it with you guys in this video today. So hopefully you can start thinking of it in this way and save yourself a bunch of time. Now let's just be really like real for a second and just think about why you're creating a case study. And to be honest, like you're creating a case study so that you can get a job right? Like no one is going to be creating a case study or a UX portfolio just for fun. So just to be like straight up, we are creating case studies to show off how good we are at our job so that people hire us. And a really big part of that hiring process is often this case study presentation interview. So when you're creating your case study, I really want you to keep that presentation in mind and build it out like a presentation first, instead of like an article that someone is just going to 
scroll through. So the reason I want you to do it this way is because when you're thinking of something in a presentation first kind of mindset, then you're immediately in a mindset where you are thinking about creating and crafting a good story. And storytelling is so important as a UX designer. So when you're doing it like this, you'll also be thinking, what kind of images do I need to support myself when telling the story? And like, what kind of visual storytelling do I want to do? This mindset will also help you focus on writing out as little text as possible, which are going to go perfectly on your slides. And then once you're finished up with that presentation, then you already have all the images and all the text you need in order to put it into a case study. And it's just so much easier to turn a presentation into a case study than it is to turn a case study like written on your portfolio into a presentation. And by doing it, you also have already given yourself so much practice on that case study presentation, which can be really important when you're going through a job interview process. So definitely do what you can and save yourself that time so that you can set yourself up for success during that interview. Now, those are my three tips on improving your UX design case studies for your portfolios. We went through one, which was thinking about just solving one problem in your case study, two, making sure that it is really fun to scroll through, and three, thinking about your presentation first. So I really hope that this video was able to help you with your case studies. Now, there are going to be timestamps at the bottom of this video in the description as well as in the comment section. I'll definitely have something pinned there. And if you have any questions, make sure to also leave them down below in the comment section as well so that I can see it and answer you. And if you're interested in this kind of UX design content, I also post on Instagram and TikTok. And I also have a Twitch where I do UI design live streams. They're really chill, really cozy, and you guys kind of get to see my UI design process. So definitely check out my socials. They will all be linked in the description. Finally, if you are looking for something a bit more one-to-one, -one, then I do offer one-on-one -on -one mentorship on Superpeer. And often what I do for these one-on-one -on -one calls is review resumes, review case studies, and also help you do some mock interviews. I do case study presentation mock interviews and whiteboarding interview mock interviews so that you can just get some practice and also get that feeling and experience of what it's like going into one of these interviews before like the real deal or the actual thing. Also, if you're looking for any kind of like career advice or just like general UX qu questions you want to ask, I'm also available on Superpeer there as well. So definitely go check that out. All right. I think that brings us to the very end of this video. I want to say thank you once again to watching it and just, you know, being here. Thank you as always. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.